In this video, we'll take a look at how to manage the data source library and how to add an XML file as a data source as well as a database. The first thing that we're going to do is go into the task panes menu and select the data source library task pane. Now, that's going to open up the data source library task pane and we can take a look at the different data sources. As you can see, there are SharePoint lists as well as SharePoint document libraries. And then there are database connections and XML files, which is what we're going to deal with today. Deal with the database connections first. In order to start, we'll add a new database connection. Now this is only going to add it to this particular SharePoint site. We'll click on Connect to Database. It's going to bring up the data source properties. Now in this case, this is a new one, so nothing is filled in, and we'll click on Configure Database Connection. First, we'll type in the server name for the local server, and then we need to choose the provider. In this case, we're going to be connecting to a SQL server, but as you can see, OLE is available. For our authentication options, we can choose to use SQL authentication by typing in the username and password of a user with access to the database that we'd like to connect to. We also have the availability for single sign-on if that's been configured for the server. And in most cases you would want to use single sign-on if it's available as it will not save your credentials in plain text. It is also possible to create a custom connection string. However, in this case, we're going to just work with the SQL authentication of an unprivileged user. We'll go ahead and click on Next. It's going to prompt us and let us know that uh, it will be saving the username and password in clear text, which is something to keep in mind when you're configuring this database connection. It should definitely be using single sign-on or an unprivileged user that you don't mind other authors of the website being able to see the information for. We'll click OK. That'll bring up the Select Database and Table dialog. And we can scroll down to find Products table. As you can see, it's showing all the tables and views that the user has access to. And we can click Finish. Now you can see it's automatically selected which fields it will select for us when it does the database connection. We'll go into General, and we can give this data source a name, and click OK. So now you can see we do have a database connection listed. Now that we've got our database connection, we can take a look at the XML file. Now it's much easier to deal with. What you need first is an XML file. Now there are a couple of ways to add an XML file. The easiest way is actually to go into your shared documents, which we'll go ahead and click on our IE browser here. Click on Upload. Go ahead and Browse. Here we've got our XML file. Click OK to upload it into the shared document library. And this actually will automatically add the XML file as a data source into SharePoint Designer. Now, in this case, we need to force the XML file to refresh. So we're just going to browse into that file here using the browse method of adding a file. Now that we've actually forced it to see that, we can go back here and we'll see that the XML file that we just uploaded automatically is populated as a data source. Now, it is possible to also add it manually, as we looked at briefly here, by either browsing to the source. In this case, we could add the file again manually, which will allow us to actually manage what is used for authentication. In this case, uh, we have a number of different things here. If it is available anonymously. You don't need to authenticate. As uh, we saw in the database connection, you can actually type in a username and password to use. 
Again, this will be saved in clear text. You can use single sign-on, or in our case, we want to use Windows Authentication. And then you can give it a name. Go ahead and click OK to save that. So now you can see the same XML file is being used multiple times. This one was added automatically. And if we bring up the properties, we'll see that we can't really manipulate this one since it was added automatically. Go ahead and hit cancel here. Removing them is much easier, of course. We can go ahead and click on the drop down here. See, there's a number of different uh, options available to us. Uh, one of them is just remove. If we click on that, we'll get prompted to verify that we're sure we want to do that. Click on yes. You see it just goes away. Now in the case of the XML file, we can go ahead and use the same process to remove the manual XML file that we had added. However, as we click on the automatic file, we'll see that remove isn't an option. And actually, the only way to get rid of this is to go back into our shared documents library, delete the file from here, and then force it again to refresh. Now, once that's refreshed, we can cancel out, and you'll see that it's disappeared from the SharePoint Designer data source library.